The history of Beverly Hills is deeply involved with water. That's right, water. If it hadn't been for water, there wouldn't be any Beverly Hills. In the early 1920s, a group of Hollywood stars fought City Hall to keep L.A. from annexing the elite and comfortable suburb where they lived. Old-timers called the struggle the Water Wars. In 1919, the township was mostly wild and undeveloped. Beverly Hills was a sleepy little village of anonymous homes occupied by anonymous people. Surprisingly, it was neither the natural beauty nor the affordability of the land that inspired the migration of celebrities to the area. Rather, it was a series of sensational scandals that rocked Hollywood to its foundation. When former U.S. Postmaster General Will Hayes was brought in to clean up the movie business, he intimated that secluded Beverly Hills could serve as a proper sanctuary, a buffer zone, as it were, removed from Hollywood's riffraff and the public eye. Hayes' suggestion touched off a real estate boom, and soon a barrage of stars, studio executives, producers, directors, and other well-to-do members of the industry bought land and built homes here. The Beverly Hills City Council was more than happy to cater to their prominent new arrivals. Property taxes were kept to a bare minimum, and they even built a bridle path along the middle of Sunset Boulevard. All this privileged privacy was suddenly threatened in the spring of 1923, when a group of real estate sharks who were hoping to carve up the big lots into profitable little ones began a political campaign that hinged on water. The sudden influx of so many citizens caught the Beverly Hills Utility Company unprepared to meet the water needs of the growing population. Anxious officials hoped to turn this growing problem over to the city of Los Angeles and began suggesting annexation. Immediately, Beverly Hills was divided into fiercely competitive camps. Those against annexation were led by Doug Fairbanks and Mary Pickford, Rudolph Valentino, Cowboy star Tom Mix, Harold Lloyd, Will Rogers, Gloria Swanson, and many others. Superstars in car caravans toured the local neighborhoods, asking residents for their support. Can you imagine opening your front door and finding Rudolph Valentino standing there? These stars wanted Beverly Hills to build its own reservoir, to preserve the sovereignty these citizens had begun to know and love. Mudslinging tactics, charges and countercharges continued down to voting day. Concerned citizens gathered to wait out the count. Then with news of the defeat of the developers, ecstatic crowds erupted into a spontaneous block party that supposedly lasted well into the night. Later, the movie contingent joyously proclaimed to one and all that the hills of Beverly would remain forever secure and wet. Hills, just look at that view. I can't afford it. Well, how about you? Everyone has a new Rolls Royce. Money talks in a very loud voice. Mansions begin at five million per. Women dressed up in summertime fur. Call me up, I can grant you that loan on your cellular phone. Beverly Hills is famous for its mansions. Street after street, house after house, each residence is more elegant than the one before. All of the homes cost millions of dollars. Real estate is so expensive that over 60% of the residents are renters, and the rest belongs to the banks. Let's see, what would the rent be on a $10 million house? Oh, I guess about $50,000 a month, plus the utilities. Beverly Hills has some charming character homes, which are also quite famous. This is the Witch's Cottage. It was built for a motion picture during the silent era, then brought into the middle of Beverly Hills, and families have lived happily here for years. The home is guaranteed to have a skeleton in every closet. This residence is brand new and one of the most controversial in Beverly Hills. It looks a little like they built it with Silly Pussy. Lucy lives here, and Jimmy Stewart's house is right across the street. Jimmy wanted a larger garden, so he bought the house next door and tore it down. Now, at today's prices, 
That probably makes each rose worth about $2,500. This future home of producer Aaron Spelling is the largest house in the area, with a bowling alley in the basement. Think of it as a landlocked love boat. However, it will be surpassed in a few months when Merv Griffin completes his home, which is going to be even larger than Spelling's, and reportedly has its own golf course, its own zip code, and it takes a toll call from the kitchen to the den. Still, it is the place of my dreams. Come enjoy the simply stunning thrills of Beverly Hills. This rare footage demonstrates how nothing delayed or deterred the determined Beverly Hills Fire Department.